two weeks into the new year. And the message is in line. You know what? Each year I would ask the Lord to give me a word uh, uh, and make it catchy so that the congregation will remember it. And so each year I would ask the Lord to give me a word. And so the word for us this year is entitled, Enter Through Your Open Door in 2024. Entering through your open door in 2024. Can we pray? Can we pray? Father in heaven, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We thank you for bringing us to the foot of the mountain this morning. The psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I need your help to bring this message to your people today. And we look towards the hills. We look towards Calvary this morning. For a word, Lord, for strength, for hope. This is a time in our service, God, when we hear from heaven. And I ask that you would just help me to deliver this word, God. It's a word to guide our church throughout 2024. And I thank you that there's an open door of opportunity and advancement and promotion, a door of blessings open to each one who's a part of this church. This message is for this church primarily, Spring of Water Christian Assembly. And so, Lord, may you minister through me that your people may discover how to enter through their open door in 2024. Thank you for what awaits us beyond the door and help us to receive it this morning and not enter through the wrong door but enter through the door that you have opened to us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Entering through your open door in 2024. So the first thing I want you to know today is that as a child of God, as a child of God, there is an open door for you to enter in 2024. Amen? So the door is not for everyone. Amen? The door is not for everyone. The door is for those who are children of God, those who believe that Jesus Christ is the door, Amen? And that he opens doors for us. Amen? So, again, as a child of God, there's an open door for you to enter in 2024. In a sense, I'm prophesying over you. Amen? I'm prophesying over you. Hopefully, through this message, you will find your way to the door. I'm not going to be a fortune teller and try to tell you all that awaits you behind the door. Amen? You know, some people, they go to see a soothsayer, a fortune teller, the Obiaman, amen, the voodoo man, and especially at the beginning of the year to find out what's behind the open door. Amen? All I can tell you, it's a door of blessing. Amen? I said it's a door of blessing. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. And Christ wants you to know that he has the door of blessing open up for you. Amen. Especially in this new year. It is now up to you to enter in. It's up to you to enter in. And you know, some people, uh, have failed to access all that God has for them. Amen? The Bible tells us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And some folks refuse to taste and see that the Lord is good. So many people are in church today and they're going to hear again as they have heard before that God is a God of blessings. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond whatsoever we could ever ask or imagine. Amen? That God has good gifts in store for those who love him. That God is a healer. That God is a deliverer. That God is a provider. And they have heard it time and time again. But they have failed to access the goodness of God. They have failed to take God at his word. Church, I can tell you from personal experience, especially what my wife and I are going through, my mother-in-law is not, you know, society said she's my mother-in-law because I married her daughter, but she was a mother to me. Amen. She didn't give birth to me, and she even in this church she said, I didn't give birth to Ronald. But he's my son. Amen. And that's the relationship we had. Hallelujah. And she could go off to glory knowing that this son, hallelujah, is going to make sure that everything when it relates to her will be all right. Amen. And I made her that promise. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, again, they are those who know that God is good, that God is great, that God is a very present help, that God is an on-time God. Amen? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The wonderful things that God has in store for those who love him, but they will not budge. I said they will not budge. Hallelujah. And so God is sending this word to somebody today to stir them. Amen. There is an open door. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It's yours, church. And this is the year to enter your open door. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that truth today? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I pray that this message will encourage your heart today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the good news is, as you're going to find out when I share the passage with you, is that when Christ opens a door for you, no man, Oh, come on, somebody. I said, when he opened a door for you, no man can shut it. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap today. When he opens a door, so the rest is left to you to enter that 
open door. Amen? And so today with my message, I may not be able to tell you all oh, that's behind the door. It's not the price is right. Or let's make a deal. Amen? That's not where I'm going. I just want to show you how you can open the door. Amen? Because it's up to you to open the door. He is the door. But it's up to you to open the door. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Can you put John 10, verse 9 up for me, please? That's not our scripture for the day, but I just want you to, to know that Jesus is the door I'm talking about. Amen? Hallelujah. John chapter 10. Let's read that. Let's read that. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The psalmist says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to do what? Lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. Green pastures. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, cows love green pastures. Amen. You know, as a, as a young boy in Jamaica, my parents didn't have cows, but I had some friends who had cows. And I enjoyed going with them to bring the cow to pasture. And I think that has helped me to be a caring pastor. Amen. And for those of you who don't know, the one of the role of the pastor is to bring the sheep into green pasture. Did you get that? There, there's a lot of similarity between the word pastor and pasture. The pastor takes the sheep to green pasture. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I would... I would get up early in the morning and, and go with my friends. People don't do that today. But I would go with my friends, with the cows, and bring them to green pasture. And once we got to green pasture, the cows would just stop and feed. Praise the name of the Lord. They remained there. Praise God. So Jesus says, I'm the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. So number one, I want you to know that, that I, and I can tell you without a doubt. Remember I say I can't tell you everything behind the door. But one thing I want you to know today, that that door is a door to salvation. Did you get that? I said it's a door to salvation. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out, church, and find green pasture. That's a picture of prosperity. Are you with me? This is the year for you to prosper in God. I'll say it again because by now some people should be shouting, thank you, Jesus. This is the year for you to come into prosperity, the prosperity of God. Amen. 2024 is the year that you and your household, you're going to prosper. Oh, shout hallelujah, somebody. Shout praise the Lord in this house. You know, in the church, and I'm talking the church worldwide, 
One of the things that intrigue people is the prophetic. Are you with me? Is the prophetic. And prophecy has its place. But if you notice something about your pastor, I only prophesy to you what the word of God says. Oh, come on, somebody. I said I only prophesied to you what the word of God says. And I've had to take some heat for that. Because they are those who say, you know, what kind of prophet are you? Or how come you're not prophesying? Because people want to hear tales of good fortune. Are you with me? People want to hear man's opinion. I'm not here to give you my opinion, but what I want to prophesy over you is the word of God, and the word of God comes to tell you today that there's an open door for you. Amen? And this door is a door of prosperity. Say amen, somebody. And for the unsaved, it's your key to salvation. It's a door of salvation. It's a door of everlasting life. It was a wonderful thing for me to see my mother-in-law go off to glory. Church, I was praying. And she was looking at me while I was praying. And I closed my eyes. And then I opened my eyes and there was a peace. There was a stillness. I had to ask the nurse, is she still here? And she said she went on four minutes ago. And I've prayed over people in their final days. I pray as a pastor and then I go on my way. And then maybe days later, a week later, amen, I will hear the person pass. This is the first time, hallelujah, that I'm praying for someone who is transitioning and they pass on while I am praying them into glory. Hallelujah. And church, that's something I'll never forget. And I really believe my mother-in-law planned the whole thing. Amen. To show us how to go. What a way to go. We were singing. Amen. She moved her lips a little bit. And then all of a sudden there was a stillness. She went on into glory. Church, that's how I want to go. I said, church, that's how I want to go. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never, ever pass away. Matthew 24, 35. And that's why I'm committed to preaching and enforcing to the best of my ability and prophesying to you the word of God. You know, on New Year's Eve, each one of you received a scripture. I pray that you did receive a scripture. If you are here, if you weren't here New Year's Eve or last Sunday, Pastor Karen passed out some scripture verses. That's a word. God, God has a word for you. Just raise your hand. Let me see. If you didn't receive a word, amen, we have one, we have two hands, we have three, four. So I'm going to be put, bringing out the basket at the end of this message, and come and receive your word and hold on to that word. Amen. Hold on to it. Praise God. So this morning, to support my message, I want us to go to Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 8 to confirm to you that there is an open door in place, set and ready for you 
And all you have to do is to believe. Amen. Accept this word by faith and enter into it. Amen. Everything you need, church, is behind the door. Praise the name of the Lord. One thing you need is the key to enter the door. So Revelation chapter 3, 7 through 8. Won't you stand and let's read our scripture for today. Let's read aloud. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that as the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut, and shutteth and no man openeth. Hallelujah. And the next verse. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Let's read that again. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. So pause for a minute. So I'm telling you prophetically this morning, based on the word of God, that there is a door open unto you, a door of advancement, a door of achievement, a door of salvation, a door of prosperity. Are you with me? Opened to you and the word of the Lord comes to say that no man can shut it for then he says to the church for thou has little strength amen you don't have the strength to open this door church it's not a door you can just shove open because you just came in from the gym amen You have little strength. Praise God. For thou hast a little strength and have kept my word and has not denied my name. See, there are some passwords to enter into this open door. There are some characteristics of a believer that gives you access into this open door. Are you with me? You can't just shove your way in there, church. There's a way to get in. And Jesus is saying to somebody today, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So just to give you a little bit of background, what's taking place here. Amen. In this particular passage, Christ is giving a revelation to this apostle by the name of John. John was receiving a revelation of Jesus Christ. John at this particular time, and I'm sure it had to be good news for John, because John was banished to the Isle of Patmos. There was a Caesar at the time, an emperor by the name of Caesar Domitian, and he was cruel, amen? And he was on a mission to remove every Christian from the Roman world, from the Roman provinces. And some were killed, and some were banished. Amen? They were put in exile to shut them up. And John, the apostle, was one of them. But while he was on this Isle of Patmos, 
He had a divine revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want you to know this morning, whatever you're going through, God can still reveal himself to you in your situation. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap today. I don't care what it is as a child of God that you may come up against. God can reveal himself. As a matter of fact, what you're going through just may be that Christ can be revealed to you. Oh, give the Lord another hand clap in here. And here it is you're saying, woe is me. Here you're wondering how you're going to make it this year. You, you're looking at all the opposition, all the trials and tribulations. Some of you, the year has not started well. Amen? It seems uncertain to you. But I want you to know it's a great opportunity for the risen Christ to be revealed in your life. Oh, give him another hand clap in this place today. And so here John had a revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, and Christ showed him things to come. Amen. Things to come. And there is so much in the book of Revelation, so I'm not going to preach on the book this morning. But I want to share with you a revelation that John received concerning an open door. Amen? The revelation that he received. And so Jesus showed him the condition of the church down through the ages. Amen? And if you are the church, which you are, if you're a child of God, you are the church. You may be here at Spring of Water Christian Assembly, listen to this now, but you may not be sitting at Spring of Water Christian Assembly. Are you with me? Because they are going, they, Jesus revealed the condition of the church and uh, the revelation is about seven churches. So the number seven is a number of completion. So it's a revelation of the, the different people who sit in church and the different kind of church. There are only seven of them. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so just for a little bit of edification, in the, in, in, uh, John gets a revelation of the condition, and I'm going to name the churches for you. There are seven. The church in Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. This prophecy was for the church in Philadelphia. Amen? This particular prophecy was for the church in Philadelphia. And that's why verse 7, can you go back to verse 7 of our text, says, unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right. So if you find yourself today in the church of Philadelphia, which is a church of love. The word Philadelphia comes from the word philos, which means love. Are you with me? It's a friendship type of love. It's a church where people love God and they love one another. In this particular church, love was expressed. Genuine love. Amen? They had a love for God. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you have love for God and a love for your fellow man, you are seated in this church in Philadelphia. If you have any form of hatred in your heart, you're not sitting in the church with an open door. Say amen, somebody. 
You can get back in, but you got to remove the hatred from your heart. You have to ask God to give you a heart of love. Oh, shout somebody, shout hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Amen. And you know, sometimes, church, we hold on to things. And we become so bitter and we become so hard. Amen. And God wants to fill us with his love. God wants to seat us in the church of Philadelphia. But because our heart is filled with bitterness and strife. Hallelujah. We miss what God has in store for us. And I want to encourage each one of you today, just examine your heart. Amen. And wherever there is bitterness, disagreement, you know, God can give you a fresh start. You know, this can be a brand new year for you. You know, this year can represent a year of opportunity and a year of blessings. Amen. A year of advancement and prosperity. Hallelujah. Church, God has all of this. Amen. Behind this door that he wants to just open up in your life if you will allow him. And church, it begins when you accept the one who is the door in your life. Amen. Jesus says, I am the door. So it begins. And even while I'm preaching to you today, some of you who have not opened up to Jesus Christ, church, he is the door. He is the way. See, some of you have been going after success the wrong way. And you begin to believe in this American dream. Say amen, somebody. That it's all about a shiny car. And a house with a picket fence. And you're working and you're striving for that. It's all about money. My mother-in-law has gone on to glory and she has left everything behind. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's not all about the material. Some folks just love the money. Just love the money. You can get them to do anything if you give them some. You can get them to lie if you give them some. You can get them to steal if you give them some. Yes. And our society is driven by money. What shall it profit a man? You get all the money and you lose your soul. What, what, what is it worth at church? I pray today after this message, some of you are going to get your soul right. Amen. I want to lead you to Christ. I want to prepare your baptism. I want to see you enter to your open door in 2024. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. So, so Jesus had some complaint, and then I'm going to wrap up with the scripture. He had, some, he had some commendation, you know. There's some good things about you. Amen. Uh, the fact that you're here this morning, that's pleasing to God. The fact that you have heard his voice and accepted him as Lord and Savior, if you have done, that's pleasing to God. You're loving, you're kind. That's pleasing to God. Hallelujah. But he also had some condemnation for the churches. So to the church in Ephesus, he had this thing against them. You, 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 you attend church well. You, you conduct ministry well. I mean, they had it together. That was a together church. Amen. But he says you have lost your first love. You are on fire when you first heard of me and you accepted me. 
Your love was undeniable, but something has gone wrong. You have lost your first love. He's speaking here to backsliders. Amen. Amen. And you may be here today. You're at Spring of Water, but you're in the church in Ephesus. Because you accepted Christ somewhere in your life. You attended church. Amen. Your mom and dad were involved in church. Some of you may be pastors in the church, deacons, elders. You grew up in the church, but you have drifted. You have lost your first love. And then church in Pergamos. I mean, they had accepted Jesus, but they entertained immorality and idolatry. Are you with me? They got enticed. Hallelujah. And so they drifted. And then there was the church in uh, Thyatira. Praise the name of the Lord. And they tolerated a Jezebel spirit. I know you're following me step by step. Am I right? Was it the church in Thyatira? Yes. They entertained the spirit of Jezebel. A con Contentious spirit. And some folks are in church, but they're contentious. Are you with me? They argue over everything. They block the pastor. Truth be told. Are, are you with me? They hear the pastor said, paint the wall yellow. Well, he painted it yellow. How come he ain't painting it blue? contentious. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, this church has been made beautiful. And I would hate to know we have some Jezebel spirit here who feel, what are you doing all of this for, spending all that money? Amen? But I know we don't have any Jezebels in here. Huh? Can the Jezebels stand up? You ever notice that nobody named their kids Jezebel? Did you ever notice that? All kind of names. But you ain't going to find one person named their child Jezebel. Because Jezebel is a contentious spirit. It tolerated everything that was evil. Amen. Church in Sardis, and someday I'll preach to you on the churches. Amen. But they... Their works were dead. They were having church, but it was a dead church. May the Lord help us that our church is not a dead church. May the Lord help us. Amen. That our ministry is alive. And changing lives. You know, there's some churches, lives are not changed. Praise the name of the Lord. The church in Laodicea, if that's you, it's a lukewarm church. They just play church, but there was no fire. They don't clap their hands, they don't shout hallelujah, they, they, they don't partake. Amen? And I'm not saying everybody have to clap their hands and shout hallelujah, but you know, the joy of the Lord must be felt in the church. Oh, come on, church. I said the joy of the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. I praise the name of the Lord. He said they were lukewarm. Jesus says you are spiritually blind. You're naked. Amen. In church, but blind. See nothing, hear nothing. Know nothing. And then there was a church in Smyrna. Hallelujah. And he didn't register a complaint about the church in Smyrna. Praise the name of the Lord. May it be said of us at Spring of Water that Christ finds no fault with us. That he finds no fault with you. Not that you're perfect. Amen. 
but you're living according to his word. You're on fire. Amen. The word of God is like fire shut up in your bone. You get excited about church. When people get saved, you get excited. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And then to the church in Philadelphia, we're going to read that again. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy and he that is true. Amen. So John received this revelation of God. I was in my office and somebody was saying this morning, might have been Sister Janice in her prayer, God is holy. Holy, he wants a holy church. He's a holy God. He says, be ye holy as I am holy. Praise the name of the Lord. These things saith he that is holy and he that is true. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he that hath the key of David. Amen. Christ came to open a door for you. Amen. And whenever we read a key in scripture, it's a symbol of authority. And no one can open this door that I'm talking to you about but Christ himself. He has the key, church. Amen. He came to open up a door in your life. And I believe this is the year of the open door. Oh, come on, church. I say, oh, come on, church. If you believe, shout hallelujah. If you believe this is the year for your open door, shout praise the Lord. Shout thank you, Jesus. It is your year, church. 2024, the year of my open door. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Doesn't mean you won't have struggles, but he has the key. He knows the way out. He knows the way in. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, I got the key. And remember when Christ died, hallelujah, the Bible said he was three days in the grave. And the Bible teaches us that during that time, hallelujah, he went into Satan's camp church, hallelujah, and those who were held captive, he set them free. He took the key from Satan's hand to praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Philip, in my office, there's an envelope. Can you bring it for me? Go get it, Pastor Philip. Praise the name of the Lord. While he's getting it, let me continue with the message. Praise God. One thing he forgot is what was the. Oh, he's listening to me. I forgot. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So he says, he says here, I know thy works. Praise the name of the Lord. I know that. Did you find it, Pastor Philip? Huh? Where's the envelope? Yes. Oh, the door is locked. I forgot to give you the key, brother. Now you can get the envelope. And Pastor Philip, whatever in the envelope is yours, brother. Come and tell them what's in the envelope. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. 
He's got a smile on his face. You know why? He's got the key. Huh? He's got the key. Praise the name of the Lord. I know thy works. Amen. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Amen. Church, everything that you need, God has set it up. Amen? Behind that open door. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap. I know thy works. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It says, I know thy works. See, God knows your heart, church. He knows your work. You found it? All right. Can I get my key back? The envelope is yours, but the key is mine. Amen. Jesus says, I have the key of David. I'll get the key back. The ushers took the key. See, they know what's behind the door. Can you open that envelope and tell them what it is? What did it say on the front? Give them a microphone. What does it say? A open door of blessing. Pastor, re read it for us just for those who are watching. What does it say on the envelope? It says on the back of the envelope, open door blessing. Uh, can you, let's see what the blessing is, brother. Okay. Amen. I set before you an open door. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's dollar bill, twenty dollar bill. Amen. It's all Praise mine. God. It's yours, Pastor Philip. Have some coffee on pastor this morning on your way home, right? Bring some for Sister Joy now. It's a twenty. Amen. 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 But church, I'm just want to demonstrate. I just wanted to demonstrate to you, Amen that you can't get into this door of blessings without the key. And here Jesus says, I have the key. Amen. Amen. When he died, he went to hell. He took the key from Satan. Amen. Amen. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead, but now I'm alive. I have the key. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I have the key. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And Pastor Philip has helped me to demonstrate today that the way to get to the door is you've got to have the key. And the key is Jesus Christ himself. Oh, let's give him a hand clap today. So he wants you to know the door is open. It's up for you to enter. It's for you to be prepared. You see, he went in unprepared. And when he, because he went unprepared, what did he find? A locked door. The door is not for anyone, church. It's not for everyone. It's for those who are prepared. My mother-in-law was prepared. Praise the name of the Lord. For a week, all she kept saying, I want to see Jesus. Let me go. I want to go to the promised land. Can you imagine that? I've never heard anything like that in all my years. I've heard Christians in their last moment curse and be angry. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Some hospital workers are surprised. Because, you know, death brings with it, as the Bible said, the sting of death. It's not always comfortable, church. Amen? But when the Lord walks with you and talks with you and leads you into the promised land, hallelujah, there's a peace and there's a joy. Amen. One songwriter says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like seas billows roll, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Praise the name of the Lord. 
I have the key of David. Praise God. I know thy works. I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. Praise the name of the Lord. Have a little strength. And some of you have been stretched. But hold on to Jesus. Amen. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And you have kept my word. And have not denied my name. That's the whole key to the open door right there. Amen. But you hold on to this faith. Amen. Faith open doors. Oh, come on, church. I said faith in Jesus will open doors for you. And God will not forget your labor of love. He'll not forget your works. I can tell you that. Man will forget, but God won't forget. Serving God can help you get into your open door. Jesus says, I know your works. Amen. I know your labor. I know how when it was rough and tough that you endured. He who endured to the end, come on, help me, shall be saved. Amen. This is the year for you not to give up on your faith. This is the year for you not to let go. This is the year to hold on to Jesus. He is the key to your open door. Let's give the Lord a hand clap today. Let's stand, let's stand, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't, don't stop clapping, don't stop clapping. Praise God, praise God, praise God. In closing, while you're standing, Paul and Silas were put in prison for their faith. Amen. They were put in prison because they stood up for Jesus. And they ceased not to preach Jesus Christ. And they were put in prison. But the Bible tells us in, I think it's Acts chapter 16. Can you put that up? And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. I think it's Acts chapter 16 and verse 25. Can you Put that up on the overhead. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read together. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Church, God honors prayers. God honors praise. Amen. I want to encourage each and every one of you, starting next week, don't miss praise and worship. Are you with me? Don't miss praise and worship. I want you to make that adjustment. Some of you are missing praise and worship, and you're missing an opportunity into an open door. Are you with me? You're here for the prayer, but you're not here for the praise and worship. Oftentimes when we start, am I right, Pastor Karen? It's just a handful. Because we, 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 we're not taking advantage of all that God has in store for us. Worship takes you into the very presence of God. Worship opens a door into the presence of God. I said worship opens a door into the presence of God. And I would hate to know that I have preached this word to you today and you're going to continue the same old way and try to open the door for yourself. I said, worship opens the door. Paul and Silas prayed, so prayer opened doors. Be on the prayer lifeline. Be here when we have prayer meetings. We're gonna start that up again. Be here, prayer opened door. Listen to what happened for, to Saul, Paul and Silas when they prayed. Next verse, please. 
At midnight they prayed. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Listen, God is getting ready to do something suddenly in somebody's life. But you got to stop praying and you got to stop worshiping God. You are shutting up your own open door because you are remaining the same old way and not even the word of God is going to move you. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, help me, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all the doors were open. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. And everyone's bands were loose. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The devil is a liar. God wants to set you free. God wants to deliver you. God wants to give you access. But you got to start doing what God wants you to do so you can enter your open door in 2024. God bless you. We love you. We love you. I love you. I thank God for you. I ask that you pray my strength in the Lord that I can continue to preach the word of God to you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. It has gone forth today in the name of Jesus. And I know it has touched hearts today. And I pray, oh God, that those who have been touched today, God, will just be obedient to your voice. Jesus, you said, you know our works. I know thy works. Hallelujah. You know us better than we know ourselves. And so I pray for a release in the lives of your people. Thank you for all that awaits us in 2024. Beyond this open door that you have set before us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Shout praise the Lord. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.